The United States has many very famous and very creepy places, places where one can go and reliably have encounters with UFOs, ghosts, and even cryptids. Places like Brown Mountain, North Carolina, Mount Shasta in Northern California, Skinwalker Ranch in Northern Utah, and of course, the entire state of Florida. However, on the other side of the Iron Curtain during the Cold War, the Soviet Union was having its own fair share of encounters with anomalies that they cannot explain. An epicenter for such events was Lake Baikal. Lake Baikal is an incredibly stunning place. 50% of all plant and animal species that can be found there can only be found in or around Lake Baikal, including, of course, this beautiful, adorable species of freshwater seal. It is no contest the deepest freshwater lake in the world. It doesn't even come close. The Great Lakes are barely half the depth of Lake Baikal. It also contains 20% of all of the world's fresh water. The sheer magnitude and volume of this place makes it a place that would be subject to incredible mythology. But before I do that, I want to remind you guys to like the video and leave a comment. We do need to beat the algorithm here. They really don't want people to realize how mysterious and beautiful this planet really is. Anyway, the Buryat people, the native people of the region, have a few creation stories for how Lake Baikal came to be. I will be sharing the one that I believe is most relevant for the topics we'll be talking about in this video. Long ago, there was a dragon that was riding in a golden chariot. This dragon swung his tail and created a giant gash in the earth. The dragon swung his tail a second time and melted all of the snow and ice that was in the mountains, creating beautiful streams of fresh, clear water that would fill this gash in the earth that he had created. The last thing he did was swing his tail a third time, populating the entire lake and the surrounding land with animals, plants, birds, fish, everything that is needed for a fruitful and beautiful ecosystem. With the dragon's work done, he exited his golden chariot and swam to the bottom of the lake. By the way, the sources for the stories in this video come basically from one or two websites. One is just lakebaikal.org and one is key to Lake Baikal. Both are great websites. I'll be linking them in the description below. So immediately this creation story has two things that stick out to me. One, of course, is the golden chariot in the sky. The other is the dragon itself. Let's talk about the UFOs and the alien encounters that have been happening at Lake Baikal. Some context though, before we talk about these UFO sightings and incidences, you have to understand that the people of Lake Baikal definitely live a second world lifestyle. Sure, they technically live in a modern country, but Russia is a very big place. This is not European Russia, this is Mongol Russia. These are people that live in such a way that electricity is kind of a luxury and they don't really interact with the outside world too much. And between that and the intense security apparatus of the Soviet and Russian states, it means that if anything cool does happen there, there's not really a big chance that the rest of the Western world would find out about it. So you have to understand what we're talking about today come directly from the locals and from what we can skim from Russian declassified documents, which by the way, there's really not that many of them. In 1959, a 2U-104, a Russian passenger liner, was flying over the region when it very suddenly crashed near a town in the south of Lake Baikal. According to all the locals who saw it, it was being very closely pursued by what looked like a long silver disc. 50 years later, a small team of people went and visited the crash site. They said that there were burn marks all over the fuselage. This is not the first time that we have heard of an airliner being shot down by a UFO. Although these kinds of stories are rare, they're certainly not unheard of. And we are all perfectly aware of the UAPs that have been harassing American fighter assets for, well, who knows how long. The year is 1982, and a team of scuba divers are training in Lake Baikal. It is an ideal place to train scuba divers, not just because of its depth, but also because the fresh water is relatively easy on the equipment, and the lack of an ocean current means it is relatively safe, or at least they thought. And keep in mind, this was not just some civilian scuba dive team. This was a military team. 
While they were training in the northern part of the lake, they said that they were approached deep in the water by, quote, three meter tall humanoids. Now, meters is not nearly as an efficient a measuring system as feet. However, three meters translate to basically nine or ten feet absolutely huge. These creatures were clothed in a silver suit and had a strange helmet that, although it covered the top of their heads, it didn't cover the bottom, leaving them exposed to the water. These are not your classic little green men. These guys are literally 9 to 10 feet tall, and there's three of them staring right in the face of these Russian divers. However, they did swim away, leaving them unharmed. Well, not to be deterred, the Russian divers the very next day returned to the same spot with rope, hoping that they would somehow tie them up and capture them and bring them back to shore, surely for interrogation. I'm not sure what they were planning on doing once they actually caught him, but it didn't matter. The group approached the three aliens, or whatever they were, and one of them pulled out a strange metallic object, which caused a vortex in the water. Now, this part is unclear because obviously this experience was incredibly disorienting to all the divers involved. However, whatever happened caused them to come up to the surface way too quick, quickly, giving every single person the bends. Unfortunately, three men died, and it appears that they were dead once they hit the surface of the water before the bends had time to kill them. However, four other divers that were in the group were permanently disabled. A very tragic story indeed, but what does this tell us about Lake Baikal? There's this idea that these creatures, these aliens, these little green men, that they come from outer space. Well, honestly, there's nothing that we know from the footage and from the documentation about UFOs that says they have to come from space. We have just as much evidence showing that they are more than happy to go deep into the water. What better place to hide is there than one of the deepest lakes in the world? If UAPs are real, which there's increasing evidence that there is, then surely Lake Baikal would be a more than popular hotspot for such creatures and craft. Keep in mind, locals to this day report all kinds of UFOs coming in and out of Lake Baikal. We can't blame them for not taking many pictures. Again, this part of the world isn't as industrialized as the nations that many of my viewers may be used to. So let's talk about the second part of the Lake Baikal creation myth, the dragon itself. Allegedly, this dragon used to come out of the water every 120 years, and the locals would have to host a beautiful festival to honor it, where they would sacrifice people and animals alike to keep the dragon from eating them. Local fishermen are quick to report that it's not uncommon for them to see a 30 meter long black object slither beneath their boat. You have to understand, Lake Baikal is very, very clear. So even if the creature is relatively deep into the water, it's still plenty visible for your average person to see. And there are even reports of submarines that have been used in the lake picking up that same 30 meter long signature. It is almost always reported as something that is snake-like or sturgeon-like. Well, the most famous story related to this creature comes from, where else, 4chan. Allegedly, the Anon that posted the story worked in the local forest service, and he started noticing all sorts of weird anomalies around the lake. He started noticing that fish and animals, and sometimes even people, would show up on the shore of the lake completely gutted and hollowed out. As he investigated, he met a homeless individual who was kind of a drifter in the local town. Didn't really have anywhere else to stay but a crummy old shack. As he talked with this stranger and individual, the stranger led him into his shack where he proceeded to show him a videotape. This allegedly came from one of the submarines that were brave enough to go to the depths of Lake Baikal. The submarine breached a false bottom brine layer and proceeded to go deeper and deeper into the lake. I'm skipping a lot of the story here, so I recommend that you go read it, but the critical part of the story is when the submersible came across the serpent. The serpent stared directly into the camera, and the Anon that wrote the story said that it felt like pure evil. Whatever he was looking at, he just knew was the opposite of godly. The story ends with the drifter breaking the VHS tape and the Anon moving far, far away. So here's the question. 
What is the nature of the creature that lives in Lake Baikal? Is it some sort of demon that God has trapped there until the last days? Is it the remnant of a prehistoric creature that used to roam the oceans of this planet? Or is it an alien from somewhere else? Well, until the Russians get excited and jumpy about declassifying documents like our government has, we're almost certainly not going to get any answers anytime soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Seriously, I would love to hear what is your favorite part of Lake Baikal. Have a wonderful rest of your day.